Yes, as the risk reduction is important because um, we are so many people living on an increasingly smaller planet where resources are being used for many more people. Increasing uh, risk uh, accumulated by weather, extreme weather, storms, flooding, where people are living. So simply to preserve an equitable and sustained development trajectory, we need to think about how we build infrastructure, how we you know, how we manage our cities, how much people know about the individual environment. We need to look at water, water management. The future is a lot about the cost of water, water management. It's a shortage that is already happening in many countries. So if we don't manage our resource base, it will be very difficult for us to foresee that we can continue to develop into a better and better life for everyone. So it's important to preserve development investments and it is important for people's welfare. Not yet. Government are not yet investing enough uh, because for governments also these are very often seen as long-term investments. Uh, I think increasingly in our work with governments and what they already know about their own environments, they can also see that medium and short-term investment can make a very significant difference uh, in protecting their uh, public investments. Uh, so governments are very rapidly now, uh, in an inc impressive way, I would say, beginning to use public investment as an instrument to ensure that schools are safe, that hospitals are safe, that agricultural investments are safer. Um, but of course it's not quickly enough to keep up with the accumulation of risk and that's the biggest perspective is that risk and disaster losses are increasing faster than the wealth of many countries. Communities are, risk is global, but at local level among communities where you mitigate and prevent. Um, so as you know, as you've just said, communities have a lot of knowledge but not enough voice, particularly not enough voice as an input to how central policies are being created. So one of the ways that we have chosen to do is through our campaign which has a focus on local government and communities and to ensure that we put them in the limelight in series of international meetings so there is more comfort with the partnership because the reason why or not the only but one of the critical reasons why communities don't feel that they have a strong voice is you know the vertical organization of societies classically communities are seen as the lowest level of the ladder which is uh, in fact opposite to the way it happens today so what we really want to show one community speak for themselves don't use intermediaries to represent communities and talk about what they are always make sure that they can speak with their own voice and this is whatever community and the same way make sure that local governments can speak with their own voice consistently and use their knowledge to inform also at the global level but regional level and national level so that's what we are trying to do is really put the limelight on this resource and contribute to to how to make that a more comfortable partnership because in, in communities you have knowledge, uh, you don't have very often the policy capacity and very often not enough resources and yet communities are managing a lot of the risk management in countries and globally. So whatever we can do and we're really encouraging others and we encourage the Red Cross also to make much better use of their knowledge accumulated in branches and district for uh, this type of, of learning that we need to go through. The issue of food security is definitely one of the high risk areas and the various ways of getting to a more food secure world through reducing malnutrition and, and illness from malnutrition has to be various ways but one critical area that we have looked at with specialized institution is how uh, uh, extremely underreported and 
misunderstood the phenomena of drought is. Drought is not the only cause of malnutrition and hunger, but it's one of the causes, um, which is poorly measured and poorly understood, and, and a lot more research of both um, technical and scientific nature, but also of socio-economic nature, because the, the only remedy for malnutrition and hunger is socio-economic development. Uh, so, from a disaster risk reduction perspective, we are really looking at it from uh, a drought perspective, but we're also looking at it from the perspective of how to ensure that protection, social protection networks mitigate through um, uh, protecting some of these most vulnerable communities in countries and that there is sufficient uh, medium term attention to how slowly the impact of a drought or a food shortage uh, demonstrates its, its most uh, severe effects. If I can have two picks uh, for what the Red Cross, Red Crescent Global Network can do, it uh, would be one, to more fully mobilize the local level, the local level of the Red Cross societies and Red Crescent societies, but working with other local level partners, be it local government, be it civil society actors, being it private sector uh, willing to engage. And with confidence use that resource base fully to engage in strengthening the resilience of communities. The second uh, very important contribution from the Red Cross Red Crescent would be it is a very trusted uh, organization in most places in the world. And um, one of the critical factors to help develop the understanding how in practice you can uh, reduce the, the potential impact of disasters is through credible, authoritative and correct information from a source that is trusted. Uh, and here I think the Red Cross Red Crescent, if it so wishes, has an enormous advantage and an enormous position to make use of for the benefit of helping the uh, easy access to understandable uh, information that people, individuals and communities can use for decision making and knowing what the options are.